Good morning, everyone. Tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. The reading, as you see, comes from the Gospel of John, and it follows on from Nicodemus talking to Jesus and trying to understand what Jesus has been telling him. And Jesus replies, If I have told you earthly things and you do not believe, how will you believe if I tell you heavenly things? No one has ascended to heaven but he who came down from heaven, that is, the Son of Man who is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that the light has come into the world, and men, people, love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. But he who does the truth comes to the light, that his deeds may be clearly seen, that they have been done in God. Amen. Short message. Just open in prayer. Heavenly Father, I just ask your guidance as we look into your word this morning. In Jesus' name. Amen. During the First World War, there was a company of British soldiers in a trench in France. It was 1916. The trench was deep, so each soldier would have to step up onto what they called a firing step, and that would bring his head and shoulders above the edge of the top of the trench and then he would shoot at the Germans who were going through the same process and shooting back at him. There were two soldiers in particular, one named Bert and the other named Tiny Jim. He was called Tiny because he was six foot four. <laughs> so Tiny and Bert are mates they're standing on their firing step, firing at the Germans. Then suddenly Bert steps backwards with a cry, drops his rifle and falls to the bottom of the trench. He had been shot. Tiny jumped down to see how he was and he recognised as soon as he saw the wound that Bert was not going to make it. Both of them were experienced. They had been fighting now for two or three years and Bert himself realised that he was soon going to die. They were waiting for the medics and the stretcher bearers to come and Bert said to Tiny, Mate, how, how do I get to heaven? Do you know the way to get to heaven? Tiny said, I, I, I don't know. I don't know how you get to heaven. But hang on, Bert, I'll ask one of the boys. 
And so he ran to the next guy in the trench and said, look, Bert's brought it. Um, it looks like he's on the way out. He wants to know how to get to heaven. I don't know. Can you tell him? Well, no, mate, I wouldn't know. So he went to the next guy. He went to eight men in that part of the trench and none of them knew the way to get to heaven. So he dashed around the edge to where there was another company and went to the soldiers there, one by one, asking them, one of my mates is down and he wants to know how to get to heaven. Can you tell him? And each soldier there also said no. Wouldn't know. There were an all 16 men that Tiny went to. Finally, he saw a machine gunner in a corner of a trench and raced over to him and again went through the rigmarole. My mate Bert, he's, he's dying and he wants to know how to get to heaven. Do you know the way? And the machine gunner looked at him and smiled and said, yes, I do. And Tiny was overjoyed. He said, would you come and tell him? And he said, no, I can't leave my post. But I tell you what, and he reached into his tunic and brought out a book, a New Testament, and opened it up and said, look, you see this verse here? Put your thumb on it. Don't dare take your thumb off that verse. Take it back to your friend Bert and read it to him. You'll see there's one word there that is underlined. Make sure Bert reads it. So Tiny, overjoyed, rushes back to Bert, kneels beside him and says, I found it, I've got the answer Bert, I know how you're going to get to heaven. And so Bert says, how? And then Tiny begins to read. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And they saw that the word whosoever was underlined. And so Bert and Tony, Tony looked at that and they said, whosoever must mean me, whoever is reading this at the moment. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that Bert might receive eternal life if only he would believe on the Son of God. And they went over and over the verse until Tony, uh, Tiny saw that Bert understood. Then, of course, the war hadn't stopped. Tiny got back up onto his step and started firing again at the Germans. But a few moments later, he looked back at Bert lying on the floor of the trench and he saw what to him was an amazing sight. He started yelling at his mates, the other soldiers in the trench, look at Bert. Bert was propped up with an absolutely brilliant beaming smile on his face and he was looking up at the only patch of blue sky that you could see and he shouted whosoever lifted up his hands and fell back dead whosoever The point of that story, and it's a true story incidentally, is that for each and any one of us, if we want to know how to get to heaven, then the answer is found in the Gospel of John, chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved you and me that he gave his only begotten Son, that if we would but believe on him, we too could receive eternal life. Forgiveness of sin. 
you don't have to be anybody special, you don't have to be educated, you don't have to be important in the world scheme of things. The only thing we, God asks is that you come genuinely seeking, being sorry for the wrong things that we have done. And if we believe on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved. It's as simple as that. And yet it is a message that so many people do not know. So many people try different ways to get to heaven or that they think will enable them to get to heaven. But when it comes down to it, there is only one way and that's through the Lord Jesus Christ who gave himself for us at the place we call Calvary where he was crucified, died, was buried and then he rose again. And in dying for us, he took his sins upon, our sins upon himself and enabled us to get off scot-free. <laughs> we truly are blessed. It's a terrible, terrible thing to find ourselves not knowing the way to heaven. In England, a man wrote a very, very great play and uh, it involved a Salvation Army officer. It was an excellent play and so they got this famous actress to come and play the part of the Salvation Army officer. And she did a wonderful job. But then one night on the way home, she had been running late, had to go to another appointment after the show, so she didn't change out of her costume. She went home in her Salvation Army officer's uniform and came across a wreck, dead people, dying people, broken people. Being a kind lady, she leapt out of her car and raced to their assistance. One person, seeing her, started crying out, I don't know how to be saved. I don't know how to get to heaven. And what a tragedy it was. Because you see, she was only an actress. She didn't know either. She had the right clothes. She looked the part. But she did not know the way. And the person died before her eyes. And she had no answer, no help no way of knowing how do I get to heaven so I thought this morning that I would just tell you that little story of Bert and Tiny just to emphasize and I don't know where any of us are at spiritually but if you are ever starting to think about how do I get to heaven what is going to happen after this life comes to an end as surely it will, there is an answer and you can find that answer in the Gospel of John or indeed in the other Gospels, Matthew, Mark and Luke in the Bible. But John is very good and very clear. He says elsewhere that if we confess our sin, that's to God, then he, God, is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We don't have to fear dying. We don't have to worry about what's going to happen after dying. Because once you've given your heart to the Lord Jesus, believe on the Lord Jesus and thou shalt be saved. So I'd just like you to think on those things. Do you know the Lord Jesus this morning? I hope you do. But if you don't, contemplate those words. For God so loved you and me that he gave his only begotten Son.
the Lord Jesus Christ. That if we would but believe on him and what he did for us, we too can receive forgiveness of sin and eternal life and be assured that when we pass from this life, we will go to be with the Lord in the next. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord and God, great is thy faithfulness indeed. Wonderful is thy mercy. I just pray, dear God, Lord and Father, that you would be with each of us here today. I pray that you particularly be with the little ones. Bless them and guide them and help them. Keep them safe, I pray. Bless and be with those who will be raising them and uh, who will have part of overseeing their early life. May they too be guided and given wisdom and enlightenment, patience and love. And may the Lord just bless, I pray, each family and each individual that's represented here today. Thank you, Lord, for your many mercies. Now, as we proceed with the next part of our service, we pray you would bless us all in Christ's holy name, for Christ's sake. Amen.